We're going to look at wisdom part three this morning. Uh, we've been uh, looking at the issues of what we are to be building into our inner man, uh, the gold, silver, and precious stones specifically. Uh, you do a very good par part on your own to build in the wood, hay, and stubble, so I don't think we need to talk about that um, and so forth. But we do uh, look at the issue of gold, silver, and precious stones. And in Proverbs 16 and in Proverbs 20, gold, silver, and precious stones are laid out to be wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And when you begin to understand that gold is really the first thing in the list that he says, and that equates, according to Proverbs 16, to the issue of wisdom. Now, it's interesting when you talk about gold, uh, gold's, a, gold's the number one element, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, everything runs off that gold. Where did gold close at? A couple, a thousand something. And they're all worried because it's down and now it's up and it's all over. And, you know, back in the, the early 70s, they took our money off of the gold standard and all this. So gold is very important. And, and with that, I didn't want to just run through the issue of wisdom. So um, I, we started, I started with you in looking at the issue of wisdom and the issue that it's God's wisdom. Ephesians 1 verse 8 here, he says, uh, Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. All wisdom. And, and that issue we looked last time in 1 Corinthians 2, if you want to just flip over there real quick here, in 1 Corinthians 2, about the hidden wisdom of God. And, and we discussed in the last two weeks kind of laying the foundation on this, God had a, wis a plan of wisdom. In Proverbs 8, uh, wisdom makes a cry that he was with God uh, there when he created creation. And he was before creation, there was wisdom. And he says, I, wisdom, was there and so forth. And wisdom, when you think about wisdom, the skillful use of knowledge, right? And so you know something. If you got a plan to get something done, I, I want. I just. I, one of the projects at, at, at our at, at our house is I want to screen in the patio. Okay, and and so you get on the you you Google it right, <laughs> and you find out that there's the DIY do-it-yourself sites and everything, and you get the plans and you got this and you got that, and none of them match what I want to do. <laughs> you know, it's like I got to have a screen door. I can't have a. Uh, I have to have a sliding door. And I gotta have two of them, one on each side, because of what I've got around the patio. I gotta be able to, I gotta to get to, and, and a door swinging out won't work. It, it's in the way, so I gotta slide the door. So now it's like, okay, so now I gotta go to Lowe's and measure the screen door. Well, now the screen door is too little, because the patio is so, you know, so it's like, okay, well now I gotta do this and that. And I'm sitting there going, you know, if I had money, I'd give it to somebody else's time, because <laughs> I'm lost. You know, but what do you what do you get? You get a plan, don't you? You get a materials list, which, by the way, none of them work for me. So now I'm like, all right, well, why bother? <laughs> you know, but uh, amen. <laughs> yeah, that would come from the back row. You know, well, so then I had a plan. I needed a shed, and I've got leftover blocks and stuff. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna build a shed, and we're gonna do this. And then I don't have enough blocks. You know, you lay it out, and it's like, okay, I know i got to put mortar between them, and, you know, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none of them, <laughs> you know, and, and I know what it's supposed to look like, and this, well, then the guy at work, my bus neighbor, he goes, hey, I got a shed, do you need a shed? And I'm like, yeah, I need a shed. He goes, I go, how much? He goes, it's free, just come and get it. I'm like, I'll be there this morning. And he goes, well, I don't quite have it ready yet. How about tomorrow? I'm like, fine. I go, he goes, I'll put it on. A, and oh, by the way, I got a foosball table. You want that too? And I'm like, oh, oh I would really like. I just got no room. And maybe for church in the back, ah, you know, oh, there's no room. You know, we just don't have the room for it and this and that. So if you, got a, if you want a foosball table, see me. I know where to get a free one. It's in Queen Creek, okay? <laughs> you just got to go get it. It's pretty, it's easy. And he, and he will love, because all he's going to do, Dan is his name, he's going to put it on the street and say free, but I digress. Anyways, but he got a plan. You go in and you get the blueprints. That's what God's plan was. The wisdom plan is a blueprint that this is what I'm going to do in and with creation. In creation, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make a plan for the earth. And I'm going to make a plan for the heaven. 
and I'm going to make a plan, and we're going to talk about government, and we're going to have a we're going to have man. And 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 I I talked with you several weeks ago about with Adam. He said, go in and subdue and have dominion and go and work, and and this 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 governmental issue is in place. And he goes, I got a plan to do that, but I also know now he's God, so he knows everything, doesn't he? I also know there's going to be trouble in the plan. So I'm going to keep a piece of the plan in my hip pocket. I'm going to keep it secret. Okay, that's 1 Corinthians 2, 7, 8, 9, 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians 2, what does he say there, verse 7? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, notice the it. Notice the it is in what? It's in italics. Italics tells you that the translators of the King James Bible put it in there so that the English would make sense. Because what would you say if, if you'd have said, had they known? What would your question be? Known what? So they add in, make it grammatically correct, the it. And so what is the it? The it is the hidden wisdom. He kept it secret. He said, I got a plan. And we're going to work the plan. And we're not going to worry because I got a plan for the earth. Genesis 1 verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. We're going to do, we're going to put man in the earth. We're going to use man. He's going to fall. He's going to sin. The usurper is going to get him. But that's okay because I'm going to make a seed of the woman. And that's that the seed of the woman is going to roll over into the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And out of that, we're going to move and we're going to form. Out of Jacob comes the 12 tribes. And, the, and, the, and, and out of Egypt is going to be Moses delivering them across the Red Sea. And he's going to say, there's my firstborn. And it's going to be the nation of Israel. He goes, it's okay, I got a plan. They're going to fail. Come tonight, listen tonight, you'll find out they're going to fail. And they, they know they're going to fail way before they ever fail in the book of, the, of Deuteronomy. And actually, in the book of Leviticus, they know they're going to fail. But that's okay, because out of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and out of the nation, out of the tribe of Judah, out of the family of Jesse, I, I, I've got David, he's my king. And out of David is going to come the Messiah, the Redeemer. And he's going to hang at Calvary's tree. And, we're gonna and he tells the whole plan through the Old Testament, doesn't he? So when he says here, for had they not known it, the, prin the, the princes of this world knew, for had they not known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What about the hidden wisdom that they didn't know that would have altered the event of Calvary? happening you see that because had they known the wisdom the hidden wisdom they would not have had what crucified him but what did god say genesis 3 15 the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head and you're going to bruise his bruise your heel his what did what is the what do the prophets say? Isaiah 53, Psalms 22, 23, 24, Isaiah 60. All these psalms and all this prophetic. Isaiah 53, he's going to do what? He's going to come and he's going to die. They're going to pluck his beard and they're going to do this to him. And yet all that happened because they didn't know this over here. You see that? So with the revelation, come to Ephesians 3 with me. Ephesians 3. So with the revelation, Ephesians 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which has given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the what? The mystery. Ephesians 3, verse 3. As a, the parentheses, as I wrote a four and a few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which... The mystery which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ. How? By the gospel. You see, there was, when he revealed to Paul the meaning of that event at Calvary, Satan went, uh oh, because what did Satan know? Instantly, what did he know? I've lost what? The heavens. 
Satan knew he lost the earth. The prophetic scriptures told him so. The wisdom of God, the, plan, the revealed wisdom plan of God about concerning the earth revealed to him that he lost the, the earth to the nation of Israel and to the kingdom being set up. But what did he think he still had his hands into? The heavens. I showed you a couple weeks ago in Isaiah 14. He goes, I, want to, I will be like the Most High. You go to Genesis, and, and Most High, the Most High God is defined as possessor of heaven and earth. Most, uh, Satan says, I'm good, that's what I want to be. I want to possess heaven and earth. And by the way, if I can get God to violate his word concerning the earth, then guess what I get to keep? I get to keep it all. Because God's word is what? Nothing. That's why he attacks Eve based upon the word of God. To God get, if, if I can get God's word to be mute and void and dull and not existent, then guess what I get? I get it all because who can trust then God's word? Because he violated it. But yet, what does God's word say about Israel? And Well, here's what's going to happen, and here's the end of the story. And so far, it's coming true, isn't it? But that hidden wisdom, when the information was revealed to Paul, wow, there was that hidden wisdom revealed, and what began to happen? Now Satan knows he's lost. And he knows he not only did he lose the earth, but he's lost the heavens as well. So now he shifts his plan to take as many of you with him as he can to get you to not follow the wisdom plan of God. So in thinking, now all that is review, by the way. <laughs> it, get it back into your thinking about what we've been talking about. Because I got to thinking, you're in Ephesians 3, I got to thinking about what is God doing today? Because we're to build wisdom into our inner man, aren't we? We're to build that gold into our inner man. Uh, hold on to Ephesians. Come over just real quick to Colossians uh, chapter chapter 1. This, we, we started here uh, a, a couple weeks ago. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So there is an issue of wisdom that we're to be building into our inner man, right? We're going to talk about all that next week. But what I want you to see something, go back to Ephesians here, is that as, what is God doing today in his plan of wisdom, that hidden wisdom? What's he doing today? Well, he's forming the body of Christ, isn't he? He, he's, he's making the agency that he's going to use to fill up the heavenly government out there. So I want to look back at Ephesians 1 with you today. A passage, actually we're going to look at the whole of Ephesians. Passages that you're very familiar with as you take them, and rightly so, and apply them to yourselves. But I want you to take it and look at it from the Father's viewpoint this morning. I want you to take and look at this as here's my, here's his, the Father's wisdom plan. Here's the hidden wisdom. Now we can go back to, you got Ephesians 1. So uh, I want you to, that's what I want to do with you this morning. I want to look at, I want you to look at the passage, again we're going to look at Ephesians, that hidden wisdom, the plan that he kept secret. The parts about what that the part about what the meaning of the cross was all about. Okay? Don't I, I know we take Ephesians 1 3, that's where we're gonna start. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly place, and we apply it and rightfully so. But I want you to look from it from his perspective. And what's happening in that part of it. Now, you got Ephesians, right? Run to Romans with me. Into Romans chapter one. Romans 1 and verse number 16. A verse we are, all, again, these are verses we're all familiar with, but think about it from the Father's viewpoint. Because I got a plan, the Father's got a plan, and He kept a piece of it hidden. Now it's been revealed. It, you're, you're in Romans 1. He, he says there in verse 1 Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. 
verse 3, concerning His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to faith among who? All nations for His name. The Father's plan says that now the information is going to who? All the nations. Verse 16, chapter 1. And what I'm going to do in my plan, and I'm going to change the pronoun to I, okay, and don't think it's me, just in that mindset. What I'm going to do now is I'm not, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation, but to who? To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first. Now salvation isn't going to go through Israel, it's going to go through who? Gentile, it, it's going to go to the Gentiles through no one but that mediator, Jesus Christ. That's the plan. Boy, do you think Satan's a little concerned now? Because what did he, what did he do in time past to the nation of Israel? She was not my people, he said. Satan, the adversary, and the satanic policy of attack against Israel caused Israel to not be God's people. Caused God, the Father, to look at them and say, You are Ichabod, you're not my people. Get away from me. I have to, here's your bill of divorcement and get out. They're completely gone. So when that happens, what do the Gentiles do? Their access point to God is through Israel. They have no access point. God says, the Father says, now we have access. Say, all of Satan's work to destroy Israel is now a mute deal in the, in the hidden wisdom plan. See that? Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Not only that, I think that what we're going to do, chapter 3, verse 21, but now the righteousness of God, we're going to take that law and do away with it. Without the law is what? Manifest. Chapter 321. We're going to take the law and we're going to blot it out at Calvary. We're going to take the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're in chapter 3, verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Because the Son went and did what He did at Calvary to fulfill prophetic scriptures... To accomplish for Israel what the scripture said the shedding of the blood of the Lamb was going to do, we're going to take that event now and we're going to blot out all this to this group of people. We're going to cancel it all out. Boy, I think we're going to do that. I, let, let's do that. And they write the plan. Okay? Now come to Ephesians 1. When we do that, we're going to establish a new agency of humanity. And when we establish the new agency of, of humanity, we're going to call it the body of Christ. Give it a new name. It's a new, it's a new creature. It's something new. Never been discussed before in the pages of Scripture. Never been there. We're going to do this now. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who? Who's doing this? The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? It isn't Jesus Christ. It's who? It's the Father. It's His plan. This is what we're going to do now with this new group of people, of humanity. You know what we're going to do to them? We're going to bless them with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We're going to set them up there. And you know what they're going to have to do? absolutely nothing to do to get it because in Romans 4 we said the access to us is by faith and by faith alone no works now that's the father's plan now watch verse 4 first word according wow he's doing this according to what According to the plan, before the foundation of the world, didn't he? What did he do? He chose to do this. He chose us to uh, in him before the foundation of the world. And that we should be. Notice what the plan says. This is what I'm going to do to this group of people that I'm going to call the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12. And what we're going to do is we're going to set them up in such a manner that when they, even when they fail, they still got it all. 
and they will be my people. They will be a peculiar treasure to me. And they will be zealous of good works. And they will do this because they haven't done anything to gain all of this. That's the plan. Don't you know Satan was a little concerned? Because how do I defeat that? I, think about that. Here's the Father's plan. What's he going to do? He's going to... He's chosen the body to be holy and without blame before him in love. Holy, sanctified, set apart to him for he's created it. I got a plan for it. What's it to do? To go out there and sit in those governmental positions of the heavenly places, Ephesians 6 is going to tell us in a minute. Ephesians 2 is going to tell us. Not only that, I predestinated them, verse 10, I'm, I'm sorry, verse 5, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. You know what I did? I, I've, I've given them an adoption status. I've brought them in. They got into the family through Calvary. But when they got in the family, I made them adults right off the bit. That's what adoption is in the scripture. It's, it's that setting up as sons and sonship and, and adultness. And you know what? I'm not going to treat them as children like I did the nation of Israel, I'm going to treat them as adults. And when they sit at the table, they sit at the table as adults. In our house right now, Linda and I are having the conversation about, are they mature enough yet to be considered adults? Two out of the three. And, and the, the question has been tabled, and it's still under review, okay? <laughs> okay? That doesn't mean that they don't act like it or they're not learning to. It's just they're not there yet. God doesn't do that with you when you come through Calvary. He says you are sons. If you're in Christ, you're sons and sons of God. You're here. Boom. Now, adults still have to learn. Don't get me wrong. We still get educated. We still learn from our mistakes and so forth. And we grow. So I'm going to have you holy and without blame. I'm going to give, I love that without blame. Why? Because i chosen you where? In Him. Verse 3, verse 4. See that? Chosen us where? In Him. I'm in Christ. And because of, they went to Calvary and they believed the gospel, which is the power unto salvation for them that believe. Because they believe that message, I've made them without blame. I've forgiven them all their trespasses. Boy, Israel didn't have that program, did they? They struggled with that. Verse 6, I'm going to make them accepted. But I'm going to make them accepted in the beloved, in the beloved one. I'm going to make them accepted in who they are in Christ because they're Gentiles. They're Gentile dogs. They, look, but yet, what did they do? They believed. So I'm going to make them accepted. And their acceptance is going to rest in who I have set up to be the main one. And that's our son, my son, Jesus Christ. In whom? In the beloved. Do you know what else I'm going to do for them? I'm going to give them redemption. And I'm going to give them forgiveness of sins. And it's going to be because of who they are in my son and it's going to be done by my grace and oh what grace and grace it is because man i could have laid them waste because you know what they were they were heathen they were my enemies and it was time to lay them waste you think about Acts 7 with Stephen and what's going on there when he sees the Lord standing and what's to come back and that is the issue of wrath and judgment and the fulfillment out of the 70th week and, and the second coming. And you know who gets laid waste at the second coming? Not only is Israel purged of the rebel of the mixed multitude, but also the heathen are dealt with in his second coming. And he said, they were done, man. But you know what? My grace, I'm, I'm going to do this for them. Verse 8, I'm going to abound to them in wisdom and prudence. I'm going to give them a little understanding. I'm going to give them a little knowledge. I'm going to give them the ability to come and to be all they can be. Not in the army, but in the body. I'm going to make known my will to them. 
verse 8, 9, 10. I'm going to let them know what my will is. And you know what my will is, verse 10? My will is that out there in the, in the future, I'm going to bring all of my plan and I'm going to reveal it and I'm going to reveal their participation in it. When I take the governmental structure of the universe and I put it back under the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are going to have an inheritance in that plan, verse 11. By the way, when you see the word inheritance, every time Paul uses it, it is singular, not plural. Don't think you get more than one. You only get one. It's got many facets in it, as an inheritance does. Uh, we inherited a house and a car and a stack load of bills. You understand that, okay? It's an in I'm going to give them an inheritance out there in, in the heavenly part, because that's, this is my heavenly agency, and I'm going to do something for them, verse 12, that we should be to the praise of His glory. Notice the end of that verse. Who what? First trusted in Christ. The Father steps back in His plan according to His grace, according to His wisdom plan, and He says, you know what? These people trusted in Christ, and I'm going to do this for them. And there's no stopping me from doing it because I am God and I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do and he makes that plan out and when he makes that plan he says what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep secret this piece so that Satan take the wise in his own craftiness so that when Satan kills the Lord Jesus Christ he thinks he's won and he did think he won because he did what he killed him then up from the grave he arose. Amen. And Satan still thought he won. That's okay because God, you may be there, but your people belong to me. The lawful are captive. They're, the captive are lawfully mine. They violated the word. What is that he says over there in Isaiah? Yeah, they did, but look at what I just did. And I redeemed them, and they're mine. And he breaks the bound of the strong man. Meanwhile, we're in his hip pocket, stuck over in the coat, just hidden God, the verse says in Colossians. And he says, okay, now it's time to bring you out. Those who first trusted in Christ, verse 13, what did he do to you? He's he says, I'm going to make this a secure deal, and I'm going to seal you with the Spirit. Because up to this point, you, would, he, you could think you could lose it because you're not doing, you're not being, you're not working. Notice that, by the way, there's no works in this plan at all on your behalf. The Father says, I'm doing it to you, and I'm going to seal you with that Holy Spirit of promise. And by the way, that promise and that seal is going to secure you until the day of redemption, until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. It's going to hold you secure until I come back and get you, because guess what the plan is? The plan is to come back and get you and stick you into the heavenly places. Boy, what a plan. Verse 15, 16, Paul begins to pray for him. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. We call it the hidden wisdom plan. It's a glory plan, folks. The, the Father of glory. I got a plan out there to have some glory. May give you unto you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may... What's that word? No. There's some things here, folks, we're to know. And the hidden wisdom plan, the plan of the Father, is to come out and is to make known and to reveal that wisdom plan. And He says, here's what I plan to do for you. And I put it on display, the power that it's going to take to do it and to get it done. And I put it on display, verse 20, when, when, I, when I took my son and I raised him from the dead. And not only that, I took him and I set him up there far above all principality and powers. On the right, my right hand, I put him up there above all the government. And he's the one. The rest of chapter 1, 
that everything is going to center in because I chose you in him. Now that's pretty impressive. That's the wisdom plan of God. Chapter 2. He says, so just so you don't, here's some more for you. Chapter 2, the first 10 verses, he gives you your, your condition that you're in as an unsaved individual and then as a saved individual. Please do not miss verse number 10. Read 2, 8, 9 with me. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No works. The first time he ever talks about works and his plans is right here, and you're not to boast about it. Now watch verse 10, because 10 is the, is the result of verse 8 and 9. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. What's that word? Unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, he says, I got this plan, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to make it my gift, and I'm going to make it my grace, and I'm going to make the only way to get in is through your faith in what I did, because I got work for you to do. And I got work for you to do now in time and out there in the ages to come. And by the way, verse 11, 12, and 13, I've set it up so that you can get the work done, because... What happens? In time past, you were this, but now you are this. You see that? I set this up, man. This is my plan. As Hannibal would say, I love it when a plan comes together. That's the A-team for some of you who aren't old enough, okay? All right? What does he do here? He says, now I got a plan, and my plan is, verse 14, who is he, for he is our peace. The plan resolves and re resolves, revolves around the Lord Jesus Christ. I have broken down the middle wall of partition. Now there is no enmity between the two. Chapter 3, he says, We therefore have concluded that are all, both Jews and Gentiles, are all under sin. Verse 15, he's abolished the enmity. He's creating a new man. The body of Christ, a new agency. He's reckoned, verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. Notice it's by the cross, not at the cross. How's he able to do this? Here's a hidden meaning of Calvary. I'm going to make a new body, and that new body is going to be made up of no one but sinners. There's no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I'm going to do it because... Calvary says, I can do it. And I'm going to make both one. Verse 18, I'm going to have, there's going to be some access. You've, you've got this access. Israel's program, the only way to get to God was to go through the nation of Israel. And when they were messed up, that access was cut. <laughs> Wasn't there. He says, hey, I got the plan, guys. Come and be a part of my plan. Chapter 3, he says, I, I've revealed this. I've, ma I've made the plan known. If you drop down to verse number 7, where we stopped reading a minute ago, Wherefore I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Woo! What's the wisdom of God? What's the manifold wisdom? I'm going to take a bunch of sinners and they're going to be my heavenly government because they are where? In my Son, Jesus Christ. Chapter 2, verse 6, hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, the wisdom, the hidden wisdom plan here, folks, all these verses apply to you and I, and that's how we usually teach them. I want you to, I'm hoping you see in the reverse of it. I'm trying anyway. The Father's viewpoint, I'm going to do this. And there ain't nobody can tell me I can't because I'm God. So, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Right? This is what I'm going to do. 
chapter 4, I'm going to give them a walk that they can walk worthy of. I'm going to give them a vocation to do. I'm going to give them a job to perform for me while they're on earth because I need them in that job while they're on earth to be to be learning and to be growing because I've got a job for them out in the ages to come. Godliness is profitable now, has a promise of life that is now and in that which is to come. The, the, uh, the, the light affliction is but for a moment, but it works for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. We're going to suffer now, uh, chapter 8, verse 18. The, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Woo. He goes, I got a plan. I call it the glory plan, <laughs> the hidden wisdom plan. And I'm making it known, and I'm going to use this group of people to do it. And in 4 and 5, he lays out that worthy walk down into 6, chapter. Chapter 6, verse 10. And he says, look, guys, when you're doing those good works, 2.10, that I have for you to do, here's the worthy walk. Here's what it's going to look like. And by the way, it doesn't say anywhere in any of those passages you've got to be a missionary. It says what? Be a good wife, be a good husband, be a good parent, be a good worker on the job. You see, Paul, that, that verse in Romans 12, about it, in verse 1, about your reasonable service. None of this is unreasonable. Now, I'm not saying don't go be a missionary, because they're needed. But don't go be a missionary because you think God says you've got to go be one. Go be a missionary because the sound doctrine's tugging at your heart to reach an area. And you're, and you're sold out for it and go do it. Because the sound doctrine is motivating you to do it. I was talking last week with the folks that were visiting here from Wisconsin, the Terrys, and he's involved in uh, the prison ministry back there in Wisconsin in that area, and I was talking to him about a tug that we have here for it and to do and, 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 and try to help and so forth. And, and you know what? But you know what motivates that? It isn't the, hey, it's the sound doctrine that says these guys need. And we, and we have the answer, and we can go and help. That's what's going on here. Then in 610, he says, oh, by the way, you're in for a battle. They're going to fight. Because you know what's going to happen? As soon as I reveal the plan, the adversary is going to be over there taking notes on how to get them out of the plan. <laughs> how can I move some? So he says, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Their strength is going to come in who they are in Christ. Their strength is going to come in, 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 in who I have set up the Son to be. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness and this, uh, of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You know what? They're going to be in a battle, but I'm going to provide them the armor to win the battle. And every piece of the armor is a defensive piece. It's designed to protect your inner man completely from head to toe. You have one offensive piece. Actually, you have two offensive pieces. Uh, that is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and you have prayer. That's the communication piece. And he says, that's okay. I, 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 my, in my plan, they're going to win. And they're going to win. Come back with me to 1 Corinthians 15. They're going to win. Now, all, they're going to win because of how I've set it up. <laughs> and I've set it up for them to win and to have the victory. And it may not look like they're winning. It may look like they're be, just getting beat up bad. But they're going to win. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 but thanks be to God, there's the Father, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why? Because it's according to my plan. And I'm going to get my plan done, regardless 
of the scenario. So in the book of Ephesians, what's God doing today? He's forming the body of Christ. Ephesians is that doctrinal book about the church and, and, and why the body of Christ. And yet, what do we really see there? We see that hidden wisdom plan of the Father. We see what he kept secret with what he was going to do because of Calvary. An event talked about, prophesied, discussed, looked forward to by the believing remnant in the nation. Peter in Acts, when he sits there and says, you guys murdered the Messiah, he wasn't doing that because it was a new thing to say and, and it was the, the latest and greatest topic of the day. He said that because he understood. He had his eyes, Luke 24 says, of Scripture opened. He spent 40 days with the Lord, communing and talking to him, being taught about the things pertaining to the kingdom in Acts 1. He knew what he was talking about. He knew who he was. And he says, you guys killed him. And he was our Messiah, and you crucified him by wicked hands. Paul comes along and says, you know what? You see that cross? Galatians 6, I glory in that cross. Peter was no glory. Paul says, that's everything right there. And because he's everything, then I, and I and am him, then I have everything. Because it was the wisdom plan of the Father all along. Follow that? When you think about that hidden wisdom, go back to 1 Corinthians 2. You're in 15, just go back to 2. And Paul says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. He kept it secret. Why, why would the adversaries not crucify the Lord if they knew the secret plan? Did I ask that right? Probably not. The verse says, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of what? Of glory. Had they known the hidden part of the plan, they obviously wouldn't have crucified him, right? Why? Because what does the revealed aspect indicate? That he has an agency to take over the heavenly places. The agent, they already know the end of the story with Israel, that they lose the earth, right? Right? Ooh, but if we hadn't have done this, we wouldn't have lost the heavens too. And the Father says, I'm going to get Satan to be his own undoing. And I'm going to cause him to enter into Judas. I, that, that stuff in Luke, man, when Judas shows up and he, he goes in, when Satan shows up and he goes into Judas, it's at the end of three years of Satan's minions, demons and devils and demonic activity in the land of trying to root out the nation of Israel, trying to take the Lord. When, when Satan tempts the Lord three times in, in the wilderness there at the beginning of his ministry, he's doing that to disqualify the Lord from being the Messiah, even though he knows he is the Messiah. That's why he says those, does what he does. That's why Matthew records them the way that he does. And Luke does to show that the Lord is who? He is qualified to be their Messiah. So what does Satan say? That's okay. We're going to go in there and we're going to do a little land invasion. And sends demons and demonic activity in. And the Lord comes in preaching and showing the blessings of the kingdom. And he's casting out the demons. Why? Because that's what he's going to do. Could you imagine being called legion? I have over 2,000 demons inside of one guy. The reason is because is there's not enough people in the land to house all the, de the, the demons, the devils, the little Ds. So they all bunch up in one, and the Lord comes in there, and he just, boom, gone with them. Now before Calvary, the night before the cross, Satan says, all my guys haven't got this job done. And when you can't get the job done, it's better off to go do it yourself. So in he comes. And he enters in Judas Iscariot to get the job done. 
And he does all that. And you know what he's revealed to Paul and Paul to the Corinthians and the Corinthians to us through the Word of God? Paul says that had Satan known about you and I and the body of Christ, he wouldn't have gotten even into Judas. He would have stopped it. It would have never happened the way it happened. The hidden wisdom plan of God. Now, we have that plan revealed to us. So then what are we to do with that plan? Because what does 1 Corinthians 3 tell us? Go back, just turn the page. Because this is what I'm trying to get next week set up for you, okay? What does the wisdom plan, what does, what does this plan and knowing about this plan do now for us? Or what are we to do with it? Verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So what are we to do with this plan now? We're to take it, and we're to build it onto our foundation, aren't we? Right? So then we are to take the understanding and the knowledge of that hidden wisdom plan that we just looked at in Ephesians, and what are we to do with it? We are to then take it and to then install it in on our foundation and our inner man. So then when things do come up in life, what do we say? Well, hang on a minute. What did... Ezra do back here in the old days. Do we say that? Or do we say, wait a minute, what does Paul say we should be doing? What does Paul say? Well, wait a minute, we better pray the prayer of Jabez so we can have financial... Re re or what do we do over here? We, we go and see what Paul says about finances. Well, wait a minute, we got to go out here and do the... No. What are we putting in on our plan? What is the Father's plan? What's the hidden wisdom plan? I'm setting up the body of Christ. I would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I would have all men participate in this. I would have all men fellows, see the fellowship of the mystery. I would have all men be aware of this. So then if that's the case, and we begin to build that into our inner man. A couple months ago, we studied the grace life. Do you remember that? That's what we're talking about. We take all that information... And what do we do? We stick it in there. So now, when we build on our inner man gold, the wisdom, now we're really beginning to move into the knowledge and understanding aspect, which is where we're going to roll next time. I want you to see the fact in Ephesians, though, we always read that of, hey, this is what we're getting because it says that's what we get. <laughs> that's what we're moving into our inner man. When we talk about issues of, like, prayer, Huh? Knowing the will of God. Where do you go to know the will of God? Where do you go to find out that information in Scripture? Where do you go find that out in the wisdom plan of God, the Father? Where do I go? Well, do I come over here and tiptoe through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy? Or do I come over here and I go to Paul and I say, okay, he would have me to have some understanding in all of the will of God. I come over here. Why? Because this is what God's doing. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm building on my inner man. So when you build on that foundation in your inner man, gold, wisdom, you build in there first the wisdom plan of God to know where you go get the wisdom. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because if you're looking for wisdom in any book of the Bible, guess what you're, you have not done? You have not built in the wisdom plan of God. That's why we spent the last three weeks talking about God's wisdom plan. Okay, Next week we'll talk about wisdom and we'll move it into knowledge and understanding because they've now become linked to one another. And honestly, the three are not... They, if you are obeying the word, the three are linked together with an unbreakable chain. If you're not obeying the word, you've got kinks in your links. <laughs> okay? All right? Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So where we're going to move from here now is we're going to move along and take what I, wanted, I want you to see, though, is this wisdom plan that God had for cre creation. He made known to you and I that hidden wisdom through the Apostle Paul that everything resides in who we are in Christ. That's why you're complete in who? In Him. That's why all your blessings, all your spiritual blessings reside in Him. That's why your total forgiveness 
by, is by His blood. It's Him. It's Him. It's Him. Why? Because that plan resides in Him. So when I'm building onto my inner man wisdom, then what do I know? If it's not resting in Him, then it's wood, hay, and stubble. It's Him. It's Him. Okay? All right. We'll pick up from there next time. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for the word, Lord. We thank you for the instruction, for the enlightenment, and for the wisdom that you have here for us. And as we begin to move to build in the knowledge and the understanding of this wisdom that, that you, you have been revealed to us, that we would do so with just our hearts and our ears yearning for that. In your name we pray. Amen. All right.